Okay, so your boss has said, I need a globe or like a wireframe world or some kind of cool icon um, to represent worldwide domination. And you're thinking, well, I don't really know After Effects that well. How easy is this? Well, the good news is it's pretty easy. So first thing is to get yourself um, the world map. Uh, probably the best way to do it is Google search and go to images and type in something really cryptic like world map. And then you get all these images. And this is where it gets interesting because what you probably, what I'd recommend you look for is something that's quite monochromatic. Um, it gives you a lot more control over the end image. Um, and you want something that wraps around nice, around a globe. So for example, this one's perfect. Other things to bear in mind is check the license agreement because if it's copyright in any way, then you really shouldn't be using it for commercial work. Um, a lot of images are quite cheap to use. You just have to approach the author and they normally say for a few dollars, um, it's okay. So I've already got that one to show you how it works, but um, just to show you the effects of different types of uh, worlds, what we'll do is we'll also grab something like that looks quite cool. So we'll grab that one and have a look. And here we go. So save image as, and I will save it in pictures. We'll call it that, matrix world map. Looks very cool, whoever did that. Um, and then we're over to After Effects. So new composition, up to you what resolution you use it. Just for the sake of this, I'll just keep it at 720. And then you want to import those two files. So here's that one and somewhere down here is probably the other one. There it is. Now just in case you're really basic at After Effects and don't know if you want to import multiple files you can either click on import multiple files or you can simply hold the shift key down while you select or control key while you select multiple files. It's up to you. Okay so far so good. So I'm going to switch this to one view and fit it in the window so we can see what we're doing. So this is how easy it is. So you've got your world map, you drag it down, then you go to your effects and presets and you search for CC space sphere. So it's just simply a question of typing that in the search box. Okay, and then you drag down to your layer. And lo and behold. So let's explore some options. Um, firstly, Needless to say, rotation is pretty self-explanatory. Remember, this is an animation program, so what you can do is you can click on the little stopwatch here and then decide how many rotations. If you want to do full ones, you can just simply type in, say, three here, and then it'll do three complete rotations. Um, or you can move the little wheel, and you can move all of them in combination, so it's quite cool. Then you've got simple things like radius. So clearly radius is just bigger, and there you go. And then light, which is very nice. Now, this is your dynamic range, really, of the light hitting this earth. Um, you can change the color of it. So you can make it sort of dreamy blue, if you like, if that's your thing. Shading, this is nice. You've got specular highlights here. So if you want to make it more plasticky or something like that, you can move that around. Um, loads of different things. You've got here internal shadows. You can make, um, if you make part of the globe transparent, you can uh, affect the inside and the outside in different ways when you layer it. There's loads of options for this, but on a very simple level, that's your globe and there it is spinning. So, so far you've filled in part of your boss's criteria, but you haven't made it wireframe because he wants that kind of groovy wireframe look. So let's have a look at that. Let's just put it back to white. It's easier. And part of the cunning reason why I said try and get something that's monochromatic is because we can then relatively easily take out one of the colors. And this one essentially is gray and white. So it's really not difficult. So what we're going to do, turn off CC Sphere. We're going to right click on the layer, effect, keying, and you just want a simple color key. It really doesn't have to be something complicated. Select the color that you want to knock out, which in this instance is the white. Um, and there you go. And if you edge thing, can you see you can make the boundaries between the countries seem bigger as well, which is, can be quite a nice effect. I think we're going to stick, we'll put edge thin on two, and no, no, it's a little bit too far. One, okay, just, just for the moment. Bear in mind with After Effects, it renders things in order so often it's better to move the color key up first and then let CC Sphere work on the color key. And then that's what you get. So now we've got kind of a groovy see-through world, which of course we can tint and do whatever we like with, which is great. So the next step is your wireframe. How difficult is that? You know, do you have to generate it all in 3D? What do you do? Well, thankfully not. So new, 
solid is fine, white's fine. Remember, you can tint it to whatever color you want afterwards, so it really doesn't matter what color you select. And you want to drag it behind just so you can see your sphere. And now, pretty easy, really, you're going to apply the same effect. Now, you've already got it selected here, CC Sphere. We're going to drag it onto our background. Okay, there it is. And at the moment, it's like an egg in the middle, which actually looks quite cool, but uh, probably not what you want. Um, so what we want to do is try and remember how big the other one was and the radius was 299.5 just for the sake of memory let's just round that up to 300 okay and then we're going to do the same with this one so radius 300 okay so now we've got two layered together which kind of looks cool because you've got this nice cut through effect so wireframe how difficult is that well uh, thankfully After Effects has a grid so you type in grid and you drag that down to the layer that you want the grid to be on and there it is but now remember the order of the rendering clearly we want the grid to be applied before the cc sphere so drag it up and hey there you go so now you've got your grid now what controls have you got well very usefully what i tend to use just the width slider because that's nice and easy and you can clearly do lots of wonderful things with that and then you've got the actual width of the the elements here so of course you can thin them right down to get that real techy look and because we've created these on two layers you've got some nice effects I mean first one is consider the rotation on, on the actual um, CC sphere itself so over the course of 30 seconds we've um, let's have a look at this CC sphere rotation and we have this layer here and remember you can just copy and paste it onto the new layer. So basically select rotation Y, control C or uh, on a Mac is it, uh, to be honest I don't really know Macs but hey, um, paste it on the other layer and now they're both rotating in sync which just saves you mucking around. <clears throat> so that's very simple and yes like we were saying you've got control over both areas so if you want to you could have this as a nice blue and of course the uh, the actual wireframe is whatever color you want it. I want this one, so we go to here, light, change the light temperature to blue, and now you've got blue planets on a white wireframe, and of course, you have the same level of control here, so should you wish, you could change that to a really unpleasant shade of red, um, which doesn't look good, does it? But hey, the point is, you, you get the idea. Um, you can change the light direction, do numerous things. Um, it's pretty cool. And what about the other texture? Well, what we can do is we can turn off this one. So you've got a little eye thing here, turn it off so that we've got that. We're going to drag down the other one that we got, which was Matrix, World Map. Okay, which is now here. I'm going to put it at the top so we can see it. And then you've got your usual CC curve. CC sphere, beg your pardon. CC sphere, here we go. So we track that on and let's see what that looks like. And that looks kind of cool, to be honest. So um, radius was 300, wasn't it? And now you've got a, a sort of cool um, matrixy kind of globe. Um, again, you can do all sorts of bizarre things with it. You can knock out certain colors and muck around with that. Remember with the color key, you can select just a very shallow range of colors. So you can, if you want to make the wor world look like it's fracturing, um, it's not really that difficult to do. Um, you can slice out bits, you can put different colors behind, you can do all sorts of stuff. So remember, it's just fun, just drag them down. Uh, main thing to do is spin them around, see how they work. If they're not cut out right, you'll see that they won't be a very good match, but that's pretty good. Um, and if you do it on that axis as well, it looks like there's a nice hole there, but hey, it all depends which way you spin it. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. Now, what other effects could you do? So you're thinking that kind of looks nice but i want these to have light beams coming out or something like that that would kind of look cool so thankfully um after x can do that so it's all in the generate menu so if you want to clear the search before click the little cross go down to generate and then we're looking at here light uh light burst we put that on here and this is where it gets a bit bizarre because you're thinking well it kind of looks good but um it's forming a square, which ain't great. Um, and basically it's hitting the edges of the image that we've used. So what you want to do there is you can be a little bit clever and you can get this one. Now remember, we want to keep the layers separate because we want to affect them differently. 
So get this one, the top one, the one with the continents, layer, pre-compose, and then you want to move all attributes into a new composition. And what this does is basically says to After Effects, we're now dealing with 1280 by 720, 720p. So whatever effect we now apply to that won't cut off. So here we go, we're going to bung that on. And now when you do the ray length, can you see it's coming all the way out, which is fine. So you can do that sort of nice interplanetary glowy kind of thing. Anyway, the point with all this is just experiment. Have fun. It's an amazing thing. One thing to remember about this CC sphere is it is not a true 3D object. Although you can move the lighting around and everything like that, the minute you introduce a camera, 3D camera, it all goes a bit pear-shaped. So let me show you how that works. So here we have the two views. We're now going to make this into a 3D layer and the other one. And I'm going to add a camera. New camera. Just accept the defaults. Okay, so now if I move this around, can you see that the sphere actually goes flat? And this isn't as bad as it sounds because you can do some really weird sort of distortion things. As you can see here, as we scroll the, uh, the timeline, the possibilities for actually doing some quite cool news international kind of intros are good. So it's not always a bad thing, but just remember you can't mix this object. Um, <clears throat> that said, um, there's a script that somebody else has developed which does allow it to be tracked as a 3D object. And there's also a way in After Effects CS6 of creating um, a 3D sphere, a proper 3D sphere. But it's a kind of kludge using a text outline and various other bits and pieces and will be the subject of another tutorial from us. Um, but in terms of speed, you can't beat this. It is phenomenal. And remember, you can have many, many layers, <coughs> different shading, lighting, opacity, um, all sorts on all the different layers. And the combinations can be pretty stunning. So if you're looking for that global domination news iconish kind of thing, then I think CC Sphere is hard to beat. Um, it renders very, very fast. I would say that if you're going to be doing any complicated renders using the kludges in After Effects for Spheres, you'd be better off using a program like Blender, which is free and runs incredibly fast um, and, and will do a much better job ultimately. But it's your call, so have fun, play around.